Hello children. Today let's hear a legend of the Northland. A legend of the Northland is a story based on the Old Testament in the Bible. It is a ballad. A ballad is a song narrating a story in short stanzas. And in this poem, all the stanzas consist of four lines. In total, there are 16 stanzas in the poem. Ballads are part of folk culture and passed on orally from one generation to the next. A legend is an old tradition and popular story that is told to convey a message or teach some values. This legend teaches the lesson of kindness and generosity. Though it is considered to be historical, but its authenticity is not attested. It is a curious and conventional story with a supernatural element present at the end of the tale. Before we commence with the explanation of the poem, let's look at the life of the poetess. Phoebe Carey was born on 4th September 1824 in Ohio, United States. She was an American poetess and the younger sister of poetess Alice Carey. The sisters co-published poems in 1859 and then each one went on to publish volumes of their own. Both the sisters supported women's rights movements and eventually Phoebe passed away on 31st July 1871 at Newport Rhode Island, United States. So, let's begin with the explanation of the poem. Away, away in the Northland, where the hours of the day are few, and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through, where they harness the swift reindeer to the sledges when it snows and the children look like bears cubs in their funny furry clothes. In the first stanza, the poetess introduces the place from where her story is derived. She says here days are short and nights are long. It is so cold that people can't sleep comfortably at night and when they wake up it is still night time. The poetess wants to emphasize on the fact that the duration of the night time is very long. In the second stanza, the poetess describes the people of Northland. She says that when the snow falls, the people here like to go for sledging and they tie reindeers up to their sledges. As it is very cold here, children wear heavy woolen clothes which cover them up completely and they look like cubs of bear. They tell them a curious story. I don't believe it is true. And yet you may learn a lesson if I tell the tale to you. Once when the good Saint Peter lived in the world below and walked about it preaching just as he did you know. In the third stanza the poetess talks about how parents in the Northland tell their children a story. Although the story may not be true, it is told to teach children important lesson. 
in the fourth stanza the poet is begins the story about saint peter who traveled around the world preaching the teaching of jesus christ he came to the door of a cottage in traveling round the earth when a little woman was making cake and baking them on the hearth and being faint with fasting for the day was almost done he asked her for her store of cake to give him a single one in the fifth stanza she continues the story saying that once saint peter came to the entrance of a cottage where a little woman was baking cakes on the fireplace then she says that saint peter's body was pale and tired at the end of a long day as he had not eaten anything so he asked the women to give him a piece of cake out of the many cakes she had baked so she made a very little cake but as it baking lay she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give away therefore she needed another and still a smaller one but it looked when she turned it over as large as the first had done the poet is tells that the women did not want to give a cake from her store so she made a very small cake but before she could give it to saint peter she thought that it was too big to just be given away so the women went on to make an even smaller cake but it looked as big as the first one then she took a tiny scrap of dough and rolled and rolled it flat and baked it thin as a wafer but she couldn't part with that for she said my cakes that seem too small when i eat of them myself are yet too large to give away so she put them on the shelf the poet says that the women had a third attempt to make a cake so that she wouldn't mind giving it away this time she took an extremely small lump of dough when she rolled out the dough her cake was as flat and thin as wafer however she couldn't even give that cake away then the women said that the cakes that seemed small when she herself ate them were all too big to be given away as a result she kept all the cakes on the shelf and did not give any to saint peter then good saint peter grew angry for he was hungry and faint and surely such a woman was enough to provoke a saint and he said you are far too selfish to dwell in a human form to have both food and shelter and fire to keep you warm the poet says that the women's behavior angered saint peter he lost his temper because he was hungry and weak and needed to have some food very badly the behavior of the women irritated saint peter then saint peter cursed the selfish women telling her she did not deserve to have such comforts of human life god had given her a warm fire a house to live in and good food to eat whenever she wanted now 
you shall build as the birds do and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood then up she went through the chimney never speaking a word and out of the top flew a woodpecker for she was changed to a bird the poetess tells us that saint peter told the women that she would have to build her own nest as birds do she must dig holes in the wood so that she could get worms to feed herself just like birds the very next moment the women went into the chimney of her house she did not get a chance to speak she had turned into a woodpecker the same woodpecker was seen flying out of the top of the chimney she had a scarlet cap on her head and that was left the same but all the rest of her clothes were burnt black as a coal in the flame and every country school boy has seen her in the wood where she lives in the trees till this very day boring and boring for food the poetess says that the women had been wearing a red cap in human form the woodpecker still has the same shade of red in his head however her clothes were burned and had become black as coal and so the woodpecker's body is black in color the poetess concludes the story by saying that everyone in the village has seen this woodpecker she still digs into the bark of trees and looks for worms to feed on now let us discuss the literary devices used in the poem the rhyme scheme of the entire poem is a b c b there are four figures of speech used in the entire poem the first one is alliteration we all know that alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound in two or more close words we can see it being used in line 4 of stanza 1 that they them through th sound is repeating in line 1 of stanza 2 they the th sound is repeating in line 3 of the same stanza look like l sound is repeating in line 4 funny furry f sound is repeating in line 1 of stanza 3 they them th sound is repeating in line 3 yet you y sound is repeating in the same line 3 learn lesson l sound is repeating in line 4 tell tale to t sound is repeating in line 3 of stanza 5 women was w sound is repeating in line 4 them the hurt th sound is repeating in line 1 of stanza 6 faint fasting f sound is repeating in line 2 of stanza 8 still smaller s sound is repeating in line 1 of stanza 9 took tiny t sound is repeating in line 1 of stanza 10 seem small s sound is repeating in line 1 of stanza 13 build birds b sound is repeating the second figure of speech used is repetition that means repeating any word or sentence to lay emphasis on it we can see that in stanza 1 
away word is repeated to emphasize how distant the place is. In stanza 9, rolled word is repeated to emphasize that the lady rolled the dough many times to make it as flat and thin as wafer. And in stanzas 13 and 16, boring word is repeated to emphasize the hard effort that the women turned woodpecker had to make to find its food. The third figure of speech used is enjampment. Enjampment means when one line moves to the next without using any kind of punctuation mark in between. We have a lot many examples for it. In stanza 1, we have And the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through. Here, the first line rolls on to the next line. Similarly, in stanza 2, we have And the children look like bears cubs in their funny furry clothes. Again, we see that there is no comma or full stop after the first line. In stanza 10, we have these three lines. For she said my cakes that seem too small when I eat of them myself are yet too large to give away. Where first line carries on to the next line without any punctuation mark. The fourth figure of speech used in the poem is simile. It is comparison done using words as or like. You can see it being used in stanza 2. The children look like bears cubs. Children compared to bears cubs. In stanza 9, baked it thin as a wafer. Cake is being compared to a wafer. In stanza 15, clothes were burned black as a coal. The color of the burned clothes is compared to that of coal. That's all for today. Hope you were able to understand the poem well. Thank you.